Hello there, I'm Dr. Chetan Fadke and you're watching a uh, video blog on the role of fat. Alright, so we're going to keep going and we're going to talk about how much fat do we really need in our diet and where do we get it from typically. Alright, so depending on who you ask, they'll tell you different things. Um, one thought is that you should restrict the amount of fat you eat to less than 10% of your total calories. So what does that mean? Let's say a typical uh, adult has about 2000 calories of food per day. So out of those 2000 calories, 10% would be less than 200 calories should come from fat. All right. So let's calculate what that means. One table, one tablespoon of oil is about 15 grams of oil and one gram of oil has about has about nine calories in it so one tablespoon of oil has about 150 calories so there you go one tablespoon of oil and you're done with your quota of uh, quota of oil per day allowed i don't think any one of us eats less than 10 percent we probably eat close to 30 35 percent fat in our in our diet there are some like dr john mcdougall and dr caldwell esselstein who say that you should not have a single drop of oil in your food. Same with Dr. Colin Campbell actually. They say that there's no need for us to have any oil. No added oil should be a part of our diet. So where do we get fat from? I'll tell you in a second. Okay, so uh, however Dr. Neil Barnard says you should restrict your fat intake uh, in order to improve diabetes. Whereas uh, uh, Dr. McDougall and Dr. Uh, Esselstein, they say you should decrease fat or oils because it damages the blood vessels. So blood vessels to the da uh, damage to the blood vessels can result in atherosclerosis, which is basically plaque formation uh, in on your uh, blood vessel walls, which can result in uh, heart attack and uh, clots in the brain and so on. Uh, whereas Dr. Colin Campbell associates fat with protein because the two of them come together if you look at animal protein animal food any kind of animal food has two things which are really high one is protein and the other is fat animal food does not have fiber all right okay so uh, going back to uh, where does the fat come from in our diet so I just explained to you where fat comes from it's animal products fat comes from in high quantities from animal products from meat from dairy from dairy products cheese is actually you know we take the water out so it's a very condensed form of fat plus protein and of course eggs have a lot of fat so uh, in addition to animal food where else does fat come from well it also comes from plants and it comes in the forms of form of hold on to something don't fall off and I tell you nuts and seeds they have they're loaded with fat and they're there for you know for for the plant to grow and uh, it's like a savings for the plant actually for leaner times and uh, avocado avocado is another uh, fruit that has a lot of oil in it a lot of fat in it and oil of course you know we found uh, different ways olives seeds um, you name it we found a way to squeeze oil out of it so uh, uh, that's where we get fat from in our diet all right so now the next question is how do you lose it we made an argument earlier that it's good to lose it so now how do you lose it so a lot of people say you know I should go low carbs I shouldn't eat too many uh, too much white bread too much sugary things and uh, and too much white rice and those are all good things I think it's, it's nice you know it's good to have whole grain products like you know brown rice and whole wheat and, and so on but uh, that's not the main issue I think the main issue we know that fat like we discussed earlier in the earlier segments fat comes from fat containing foods and when we consume those foods it gets stored in our gut in our uh, you know in our abdomen and then when there's not enough room it goes on and you know comes under our skin subcutaneous fat so if you want to really get rid of that then I think you have to uh, get rid of uh, the fat in your diet 
I did not quite believe in that. I'll tell you what, I love sweets. I'm going to do another whole other video blog on why I love sweets and why you love sweets. And fat too, why do you love fat? Well, I sort of explained already the evolutionary reason why you love fat. But uh, the story with sugar is slightly different and very exciting, but not for now. So I said to myself, this is uh, six months ago, that I need to cut out sugar. It's not good for me. And um, so I just, I, to, for those of you who don't know this, I used to love to eat uh, lots of peanut butter, almond butter, sunflower seed butter, you name it, with a little bit of jam. Well, actually, who am I kidding? A lot of jam. And I would make a nice little uh, hummus type of consistency. And then I would eat just directly. Or I would, if I was feeling uh, generous, I would spread it on bread and uh, eat it. So I was quite, <laughs> you know, uh, eating a lot of uh, fatty foods. And I also like vegan uh, cookies and vegan and uh, and I, I was also doing gluten-free uh, brownies and cupcakes and things like that. So I said, you know what, I'm going to stop all of that. I was thinking sugar, right? I was thinking sugar. But what the, what company does sugar keep? For those of you who enjoy sweets, think about this. Does sugar come alone? Who's the accomplice? Who's the uh, other, uh, you know, suspect? The usual suspect is the fat. It's either cream or if it's cheese or if it's not cheese, if it's some kind of uh, uh, dairy. Dairy goes really well with uh, sugar, especially with Indian desserts. So anyway, so I decided I'm going to stop all of that. And uh, I was able to successfully do it for the last four months. And uh, I'm very grateful. I got the motivation to do it and I got the you know fortitude and strength to do it. But something unexpected happened. I weighed myself and I lost four pounds. Four months, four pounds. I was like, hmm, giving up sugar is really a good thing. And then, you know, my eyes opened when I read Dr. John McDougall's newsletters, when I read some other literature about how fat is stored, what happens to fat once it's absorbed. And then it struck me. It wasn't the sugar. Well, sugar isn't very good, but sugar is not a main problem if you are thinking about uh, losing weight. Because uh, as John, Dr. John McDougall explains, that sugar, form, sugar can form fat in our body. When you eat a lot of sugar, it can turn into fat. But this is a very, very uh, intense, labor intense and slow, inefficient process. So in other words, you'll have to eat loads and loads of sugar to put on a lot of fat. But it's very easy to put on a lot of fat if you eat a lot of fat. If you eat a lot of fat. All right. So uh, it became clear to me that it wasn't the sugar, but it was the fat. So when I gave up, those uh, because I, I was already vegan so I wasn't eating any uh, dairy I wasn't eating any meat I wasn't eating any eggs so where was I getting my uh, oils from my fat from and in our cooking uh, we don't really use a whole lot of oil we use a little bit of oil maybe a tablespoon for uh, an evening meal but uh, during the day in the mornings I would put a whole avocado in my drink in my smoothie I would make a smoothie with avocado uh, I had no idea I would put, you know, a few uh, nuts, you know, almonds and pistachios and uh, uh, and cashew nuts. Oh, man, I love cashew nuts. And I found out cashew nuts are loaded with sugar, loaded with saturated fat. So, uh, I, and then for lunch, I would uh, try and eat just, uh, just uh, salads. And I would be not satisfied. And uh, now I know why I wasn't satisfied. I wasn't satisfied because there were no calories in it. There were no starch in it. Those leafy greens, it's good accompaniment, but it, can't, it cannot be the main meal. So then I started to toss some uh, nuts in it, and then I felt, uh, you know, a little more fuller, but still, I didn't feel satisfied. So then I started to mix rice in my salad, believe it or not, and that, that, that did it. That was good. So anyway, four months, four pounds. So this is something that you can try yourself. Remove avocados, remove nuts, and seeds at least for a few days you know at least for a few months or, or a month and see what happens i guarantee that you'll uh, see some very interesting results you may lose weight and let me know how it works for you that is if you're not already a vegan so uh, animal fat all animal food also has fat 
Now, uh, those of you who cook chicken, you know, we take pull the fat out and then we cook it. But here's the thing, fat isn't just on the outside, the fat is inside, fat is within the muscle. So you're not going to uh, go in and separate and pull it out. It will cook and that's what gives flavor. You know, if you were to take all the fat out of meat, it would taste disgusting. Frankly, you know, you need fat in it. Fat is what makes it delicious. So uh, if you're eating meat, you're probably getting a lot of fat. Uh, if you're eating dairy, then you're getting a lot of fat too. If you're eating cheese, you're getting a very concentrated form of fat. And cheese, by the way, is the same story as, uh, as sugar. It's highly addictive. It's very hard to give up cheese. So uh, there you go. Animal products and eggs too. If you're eating eggs, and so try and cut out those things. Measure your weight before, and then a few months, a few, uh, a few weeks later, track it, see what's happening. All right. So one question that comes up is, if you don't eat any fat, where does the fat come from? Well, like I said, we don't need a lot of fat, and the fat, the essential fatty acids, acids that we need are actually in enough quantities in potatoes, in uh, uh, different kinds of vegetables, in rice. There's a small amount, if you should Google, Google uh, nutritional contents of potato or nutritional contents of rice or whole wheat, whatever. And list, it'll give you a list of different uh, contents uh, for protein, for carbohydrates, for, uh, for fat. And there is some fat in there as well. And here's the thing, once you stop eating fat, all the fats that accumulated in your body. Our body is very smart, see? Our body knows uh, what's good for it. So let's say uh, if you have a lot of fat and we are not eating any fat and the body needs some, uh, some of the fat, it's going to use up from the ones of the fat that we have. And it's a slow process and that's why you won't certainly lose weight. You won't certainly lose weight. It'll take time. But the weight that you lose, you'll keep it off. And it'll be a healthy way of slowly decreasing your weight. Well, now that we're talking about healthy way of losing fat, I'll tell you an unhealthy way as well. The unhealthy way is if you go on a low carb diet, if you eat tons of protein, if you eat enough protein, enough fat, but not enough carbohydrates or zero carbohydrates, your body is going to go into a state of, uh, it's called ketosis. So uh, that's not good for you. And, uh, you know, for a week, it's fine. But if you go for a month, two months, you know, it has all sorts of problems. Constipation, it's got uh, chronic uh, bad breath and a whole lot of other kidney problems, uh, kidney stones and, and so on. So anyway, that we're going to talk about in a different, uh, in a different, uh, different blog, different video section. So anyway, I hope you found this section helpful and uh, I wish you good luck in your experiment and try this out. Cut out some of the fats that you're eating. Look at your weight. Let me know how you feel. Let me know how your what what does your scale tell you, your weighing scale. All right, friends. That's it for now. Have a good night and uh, eat well and be well. Bye.